This is, this is the slight problem about doing all the Marvel Mondo posters. When there's a new Marvel movie, the DMs and the tweets will start with, are you doing this? Can you tell us about it? When's it out? Okay, so my route to doing Marvel posters for Mondo was kind of unexpected. Basically, Mondo had asked me to do some work for a, another franchise, which I'm not sure, Mondo have never actually done any work for it, so I'm not sure whether I can say what it was. Anyway, so I, I did a few sketches on it, and then the studio decided they didn't want to pursue it any further. And Mitch sent me an email like, do you want to do Guardians of the Galaxy? I thought, yeah, I feel like I can do something, something fresh, something that maybe hasn't been done before. And I think with Guardians of the Galaxy, I hadn't seen a poster apart from the one sheet, really, that had really captured the sort of like bonkers gonzo color explosion of the movie. There's a, an artist from the 60s called Peter Max who worked on Yellow Submarine. He did this little tiny square painting that's like this big and it's got like a star and an orange like moon and then some kind of wavy blue and purple uh, shapes behind it, which is basically my Guardians poster. That's the thing, like whenever you see something and think, that looks inspired by such and such, it probably is. And like, we're pretty open about it. So yeah, it was, it was a good start and it was fun. And I didn't really think I was gonna do any other Marvel posters after that, um, but then they carried on. <music> Guardians of the Galaxy went over pretty well, which is nice. Um, and then Mitch and Rob said, do you want to do Ragnarok? To which I said, of course I want to do Ragnarok because I've just seen the trailer and it looked fun and ridiculous. And that one was to be released with theatrical, so I couldn't do it based on anything other than the trailer, which I don't generally like doing because you're kind of dependent on whether the trailer sort of gets the movie. Uh, and luckily, the Ragnarok trailer totally got the movie. Like I went in, I was like, I got it, I got it right. I came, I was like, yes, it's a success. Um, my poster fits with the movie. I learned a trick once from Tom Whalen, and he told me if you print on yellow paper, it makes all the other colors pop, for whatever reason. If you use that as your base rather than white. So Ragnarok was the first poster that I designed with yellow as the kind of base. To this day, it's the one poster where I got my AP copies in from DL, who are absolute wizards who make all my prints look amazing anyway. I popped the paper, and like I was heard audibly cursing at how well it had printed, because it was so green. Like, there are no words to describe how green the green is on that poster. And Mondo were, had enough faith in me that the kind of bananas, green and purple and pink, was the regular. They let me have that as the, the reg. And then the variant is kind of more muted. Not everyone likes my bananas colour schemes, but they might like the art. So there's a variant as well. But the reg, the reg was where is that for that one. Okay, so Infinity War was a problematic poster. Again, based it on the trailer. Um, Hulk is in the trailer, kind of doing his thing, running towards the camera, and as we now know, Hulk's in it for like a minute at the start and then disappears. So my first draft of the poster had a big Hulk right at the front, and it had Bucky and Cap and Black Widow all like front and center, and Thor, I just kind of like put him up there. And then I went to see Infinity War on day of release, and I had a pretty miserable experience because I came out of it, and my first thought was, well, I guess I'm gonna have to redraw that poster now because it's completely wrong. And surprise, surprise, when feedback came in from Marvel, I had to redraw the poster because it was completely wrong. Um, which, in the end, worked out for the best because the finished piece I'm super happy with. And things like making Thor more prominent, putting Hulk slightly further like, back, de-emphasizing the heroes who were big in the trailer but weren't really big in the movie. It, it worked to like the benefit of the overall piece. And, I mean, Infinity War had the most bananas release ever because it was at San Diego and the Mondo booth got mobbed, and I was trying to do a signing in the middle of it, and there were people everywhere. <laughs> it, was, it was a lot. <laughs> That's the one Marvel poster where I, I still don't think I quite got it right, because I adored the movie and the design of it, and I don't feel like I captured it well enough. It's tough when you do a poster for a movie that you love, and so there was that extra pressure I was putting on myself to just make it as as great as it could be. And there are little elements that work. Like I feel like I got the, the rendering of Michael B. Jordan, who's just like, he's so cool in that film. And I feel like I got that. But I wanted to incorporate more of the kind of wildlife of Wakanda in there. And I really wanted to have like an actual panther prominent in it. I'm too hard on myself. So, you know, it makes it sound like I'm putting the poster down. I'm glad everyone else likes it. But for me, it, it was a, a tough one. 
first Marvel female superhero movie shouldn't be a big deal, but it is because I guess that's the world. And I kind of talked with Mitch and Rob and Eric when I was at the early stages of maybe putting Nick Fury in there, maybe putting a scroll in there. Um, if I'd known how amazing Goose was going to be, I'd probably want to put Goose in there as well. But it, it had to be all about Carol. And once I knew it had to be all about Carol, it had to be about Carol like going sort of full supernova. When I saw that in theaters, it like properly took my breath away, which is rare. I didn't really know anything about Captain Marvel up to that point. I knew it was coming along. I sort of vaguely knew the character, but it was a proper sort of like, oh my goodness, like not back in the seat moment. And I was like, oh, that's it. That's the poster. And that allowed me the freedom to really just draw what I love drawing, like sci-fi bonkers clouds and smoke and lightning and just getting really into all of that. Captain Marvel was a hard poster to get the lightness right because you're trying to capture Brie Larson's face, but also while she's in like full Captain Marvel mode and like her eyes are whited out and there's just like energy coming off her hair and but still have it look like her. And at that point, we hadn't seen her at full power mode, so you're trying to guess what she's gonna look like. And luckily, it kind of keyed up okay with the movie because the scene that I was basing it on in the trailer was fairly representative. But it was, it was such a gamble to think like, am I drawing her powers right? Like, is this gonna translate to what we are all gonna see? Because Captain Marvel, the poster was released at the same time as the movie. So there was no like room for error there. If I'd got it wrong, it would have been very apparent that I got it wrong like straight away but luckily I didn't. Um, and it turned out great. And it got, I got the opportunity to do the kind of Cree costume variant with the Carol's Awesome Mohawk, which I wish I'd been able to get like a little bit more. I feel like I would have, if I was to do that poster again, I would move Carol down just like an inch, just so I could get a bit more of the hair off the top, because it's such a cool design. I know Jamie McKelvey a little bit, who designed that suit. And it was really nice to be able to do my take on his costume, because it's such a good costume. He's one of the best comic artists for designing costumes that look like they could be worn in the real world. And the fact that Marvel like, just took that as the template and built a costume around it was like, totally the right decision. But it was really nice to like, send a version of it to Jamie when I was working on it, going, look, I'm drawing that thing you drew. I hope you like it. <laughs> Tell me if you don't, because I'll change it. Whenever I'm watching a film I'm gonna do a poster for, like, I can't literally sit there with a, a notepad and scribble down ideas as much as I want to because, like, especially in Alamo theatres, if I like, got my torch out and started, I'd get chucked out. But in my head, I'm always like, slightly removed from watching the film because I'm thinking, OK, well, I need to incorporate this bit. I need to reference that. So I knew it had to have a central like, element, which was all the heroes. And you think, OK, that's fine. So then I need to think about what's going to go in all the spaces around it. And there's the time travel and there's the flashbacks. So those kind of need to be in there. And also the snapped heroes, you know, they come back at the end, but they're not quite part of the body of the film, but they need to be on there too. And so you start thinking about time travel and kind of fractured realities. So it's facets. And then once I had that, that was, that was it. That was the poster. It was building a reference image of shattered glass and fragments of crystals and kind of laying them out over each other, then just building the image. Once I had my framework, it was just a case of dropping in Captain America, dropping in Thor. So yeah, it, it kind of comes together like that. It's, it's quite an organic process, um, but it's also really torturous. Like I, I have no confidence in the sketch. And the sketch gets approved, it gives me a little bit of confidence. And I start drawing the thing, and then suddenly about two thirds of the way through, <sighs> suddenly about two thirds of the way through, <sighs> there we go, um, it'll come together then I'll be happy for like the last third of the project and it will be a joyous experience until I have to do revisions, but that's a, that's a whole other thing. As an artist, it's always a battle trying to get like what's up here down on the paper. And I feel like every single Marvel poster I do is like, a, just a, like an incremental step closer to realizing that kind of perfect form of a movie poster. With Endgame, I've, I've got it. Like I finally nailed what I've been trying to do with Marvel posters for the past three years. Yeah, I feel like this is the one, and I hope that, I hope everyone else likes it. <laughs> oh, some shit out of luck. <laughs>